Hey, what's going on you guys? Chris here and welcome to my Blu-ray update where I show you guys what I picked up from this past week. Starting things off with 20th Century Women and I actually mentioned this on my channel a couple weeks ago but I recently got a chance to see it. This was also nominated for Best Original Screenplay at the Academy Awards. And this is a drama film about this uh, middle-aged woman played by Annette Bening and she's trying to raise a kid on her own along with the help of two other girls. Uh, there's a kid right there. And this film takes place in the late 1970s in uh, Santa Barbara, California, and has a really nice cinematography. And it's somewhat of a coming-of-age film with great performances, you know, about the highs and lows and the meaning of life as the boy tries to understand what uh, life is all about. And, uh, yeah, it has a really nice cast, and this also co-stars Greta Gerwig from the films, of course, Francis Ha and Greenberg, and also Elle Fanning from Maleficent, as well as The Neon Demon. So with this edition, you also get a few special features. You get an audio commentary with the writer-director of the film, Mike Mills, as well as Making 20th Century Women featurette and also 20th Century Cast. And this film is presented in the aspect ratio 16 by 9. And in terms of picture and audio quality, I'm going to rate the image a 4 out of a 5. And the audio mix gets a 4.5 out of a 5. And uh, yeah, in terms of the image, when it's sharp, it looks really good with nice color saturation. But in certain scenes, it kind of has like a washed out look and uh, it's a bit of a soft image at times too. But uh, yeah, if you're into dramas, this film is uh, definitely worth checking it out. So that is 20th Century Women. Next up, I got the action thriller Arsenal, which features Adrian Grenier, John Cusack, and also Nicolas Cage. In this one, Adrian Grenier plays uh, JP and his brother gets uh, kidnapped, held for ransom by a mobster played by Nicolas Cage. So with the help of uh, John Cusack's character, who plays a detective, uh, they're trying to figure out a way to get the you know the brother back. So this is just a typical action flick. I mean, movies, of course, have been done like this over and over, but I thought it was a pretty solid, fun movie to check out. You also get a, quite a few special features for this release, too. So some of those features are an audio commentary with the director of the film, Stephen C. Miller, as well as one of the actors of the film, plus uh, building an arsenal featurette and the extended cast and crew interviews, as well as the trailer gallery. And this film is presented in the aspect ratio of 2 by 40. And as far as my thoughts on the picture and audio quality, I'm going to rate it a 4.5 out of a 5 for both. The image itself has a really nice deep black levels, although certain scenes, especially in night scenes, there's a hint of black crush. Other than that, it's a really nice looking sharp picture quality and a pretty solid audio track. Next up, I picked up the uh, 5 disc complete collector's edition of uh, Blade Runner. Yeah, surprisingly, I never owned this one. I only owned the uh, final cut, but I wanted to get this one. And this one's been out of print for a number of years, so if you want this set, it's a bit of a you know expensive price on it. Uh, if you can find it on eBay or uh, Amazon, you can get it from a third party. But uh, I have to admit, though, uh, my preferred cut is the final cut, but it was really nice to see the international cut, the director's cut, and uh, you know the U.S. theatrical cut, too, with the voiceover by Harrison Ford. But I have to say that uh, this film is a bit of a drag, and I do tend to fall asleep when I'm watching it. And uh, don't get me wrong, though, it's a spectacular film for what they were able to achieve in the early 80s for a futuristic movie. The special effects uh, hold up pretty well, although certain scenes you can kind of tell that, uh, you know, it looks, you know, dated a little bit. But other than that, it's a really fun movie. But like I said, it's just a bit of a drag for me. But I know there's a lot of fanboys out there that love this film and it's their favorite science fiction film. And it is considered to be one of the best science fiction films ever made, if not the best science fiction film ever made. Uh, my personal favorite for science fiction is 2001 A Space Odyssey. I just absolutely love that film. So recently I've been trying to complete my John Hughes collection. So I ended up getting Uncle Buck with uh, John Candy, classic film from the 80s. This also features a young Macaulay Culkin right before Home Alone came out. And um, I'm a huge fan of John Hughes, man, from The Breakfast Club to, you know, the Home Alone film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The guy really knew his craft. And sure, a lot of people are going to say, oh, this film is dated. It's not that funny. But, uh, you know, it just happens to be a personal favorite of mine. And I hadn't seen this one in well over 15 years or so. But, you know, it's just one of those movies. It may not be for everybody, you know, but, you know, I can understand that. But happy to own that. And for these next films, I've done full reviews for them on my channel, so you can definitely look there. For more info, I picked up the 4K Blu-ray release of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And this, of course, is the spin-off series of the Harry Potter films, which takes place about 70 years before the adventures of Harry Potter at Hogwarts. And I equally enjoyed this film as I did with the Harry Potter films. I thought the special effects are incredibly well done. And uh, yeah, J.K. Rowling uh, found a clever way to bring back the whole Wizarding world, so I thought that was pretty cool. Has a nice supporting cast, features uh, John Voight, who has a small role, and of course uh, Colin Farrell. And mine actually came with this uh, badge thing too, so that's pretty cool. 
Nice little collectible there. Next, I picked up the uh, cheesy 80s horror film Chop and Maw, released by Vestron Video, which is part of Lionsgate. And this release has been out for about six months or so. I was just basically waiting for the price to drop a bit. Picked this up for around uh, 20 bucks from Best Buy. Has a great uh, number of special features, three audio commentaries and brand new featurettes, you know, cast and crew interviews. And I uh, always love this one, man. I used to go to the mall where they shot this film at the old Sherman Oaks Galleria. So I did a whole uh, Blu-ray discussion about this film. I did, you know, like before and after pictures so you can see what the place looks like now. But uh, yeah, about the killing uh, robots. Really fun times with that, man. Next up, I picked up Office Christmas Party, the unrated cut. and uh, One of my favorite comedy films from 2016. Just absolutely hilarious. Uh, it's about this epic party that they throw to save the company. Because uh, the bitch CEO, played by Jennifer Aniston, wants to shut it down. So they're trying to land a high-profile client to save the company. And uh, TJ Miller did a great job. Features uh, Randall Park. That's the guy who played King Jong-un in the film The Interview. Um, of course, uh, Courtney B. Vance. Overall, man, it's a really fun time. Jason Bateman, Olivia Munn, nice cast ton of special features and finally i got the two harry potter films in 4k so i haven't done the reviews on this yet on my channel so definitely look out for it soon i got order the phoenix as well as uh, deadly hallows part one this also includes the regular blu-ray plus the digital hd code so definitely looking forward to diving into this so uh that's my uh, pickups for this week thanks for taking a look guys and i'll see you guys soon in my next update take care